Hi, uh, welcome uh, back, I guess I should say, to Seniorities with the Senior Center Council on Aging. I'm Linda Hayes, director of the Senior Center. Uh, and with me, as always, is J.D. Miller, the chairperson of our Council on Aging Board. And also, we are so grateful to have our Fire Chief John Murphy with us today uh, to talk about many things, but emergency preparedness um, in the wake, of course, of our recent storm. Um, but specifically maybe for our senior resident households, but the community at large as well. So good information that um, we know he can provide to us. We really have a great relationship with the fire department. We do work with them often through the senior center. They have done many programs for us, been responsible for providing some grant-based um, services where we have been to households and maybe had them do an inspection or replace their smoke detectors mm -hmm. and CO detectors. Uh, so we are really grateful and rely on them for a great deal. Grateful for their expertise and their dedication and enthusiasm, really, for their role. It's wonderful. So thank you, John, for being here. Thank you, Linda and J.D., for having me. I'm excited to be here. It's, uh, it's great to be here to, uh, to help our community, but especially our seniors. Uh, for any assistance we can give, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's for storms, smoke mm -hmm. detectors, any other programs we have, um, you know, they're, they're, mm -hmm. they're vital to this community, and yeah. we want to do all we can do to help. How long have you been fire chief, or have you been in this role, especially in the emergency management role? I've been the fire chief in emergency management now for about three and a half years. Uh, first started in 2015 was our first storm was Juno, which was one of the worst we've had in the nine feet of snow to follow. So that was um, a great introduction. Uh, it's a challenging winter. And, um, right. and now that we have the new building, right. um, the next challenge was this past storm we had last week. And uh, a new infrastructure proved to be money well spent. Um, mm -hmm. It let us be a, a lot more organized and, and prepared for this storm. Okay. Um, I think the, the after uh, the DPW coordination, getting the streets plowed and getting everything so, up before it mm -hmm. froze, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, salted, along with the um, preparation in the also response, emergency response was, okay. was much more coordinated. Very good. Uh, with the Emergency Operations Center. So you think we were fairly successful in responding and being prepared for that storm? I think we were. The preparations we met um, the week before, actually we met just before Christmas, you were there yeah. with the whole emergency management team mm. just before the yeah. season to getting going and let everybody know what their expectations were. That was pre-pre. Yeah. So pre. Yeah, that, so <laughs> that was you guys before. Are, you guys are starting in November, December to think about what's going to happen in the next three or four months. Correct. Right? Correct. So we're looking at, because uh, there's been some new faces, new faces mm -hmm. that are on our program mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in our committee and our emergency management agency. So sure. the new faces make sure they know mm -hmm. what their expectations are mm -hmm. and basically learning from the past mm -hmm. storms what yeah. we could do better. Yep. You know, so that's critical to what we can do better. Mm -hmm. Every storm we learn something, as many as we have. So we got together. Uh, before the holidays, knowing that we had a high tide right around the first of the year. Mm -hmm. We mentioned that, and unfortunately, yeah, we did get a storm <laughs> during case. that high tide. <laughs> so it was good to have that preparation meeting prior to the holidays, but we also met uh, typically two or three days before a storm. Mm -hmm. We'll meet with the whole emergency management team again, make sure everybody's aware of what their mm -hmm. responsibilities are, if they need any resources. Mm -hmm. uh, we asked the shelter team to be prepared to open. Uh, assume they're going to be opening, and we did because uh, that takes some time in preparation to get the, uh, all the resources for that. We did bring an extra trailer of cots from oh, wow. MEMA. We brought an extra trailer of cots of 50 cots we had staged here in case we had the long-term power wow. outages. We were expecting large numbers, mm -hmm. but the power obviously was not the main challenge in this storm, right. fortunately. Right. Shelter always is, is at the high school? Shelter is always at the high school. Okay. It's at the, uh, the cafeteria at mm -hmm. the high school, mm -hmm. and um, we're looking actually at the junior high to have a potential to expand that. So if we were ever to get a hurricane, okay. a category two or three hurricane, mm -hmm. where we'd have a lot more expectation of people to come in for the shelter, how do we expand? So we're trying to look bigger picture now. We do a pretty good job. We do a very good job at Nor'easters. The shelter team has, it's a well-oiled machine. Mm -hmm. um, and now you and those prepare are, for hurricanes. So now we got to prepare. And that's <laughs> statewide. It's not just situation. we got to look at, because uh, mm -hmm. we're here. We're on the coast. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to happen, yeah. so um, whether it's two years, 10 years, 20 years from now, mm -hmm. we have to have a plan. So that's what mm -hmm. we're looking at now is how do we think bigger mm -hmm. picture. And the biggest mm -hmm. thing is we have the place, mm -hmm. high school, junior mm -hmm. high, usually the food is there right. because of the schools, but mm -hmm. it's really personnel. Mm -hmm. If you remember the hurricanes back in this fall when it went through Florida, I remember the governor asked, mm -hmm. we need 17,000 volunteers. Mm -hmm. 
and obviously it's a much bigger scale project mm -hmm. down there in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. But you know, we need mm -hmm. more volunteers okay. to help out when we have this ongoing, say, a four or five, seven day shelter. Yeah. The primary people will get burned out in two yes. days. Yeah. So we need to have a rotation. They had a rotation mm -hmm. as best they could, but. Mm -hmm. Volunteers are a key, so those who are mm -hmm. capable to volunteer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to please reach out to either the fire or the police. Or if they go on um, the SANS website too, they right. go on the SANS right. website too okay. and inquire there who wants to help, especially nurses, people in the medical field mm -hmm. that can assist, RNs, people that are retired in public safety, social mm -hmm. work. There's mm -hmm. all vital people, especially when mm -hmm. this goes on for a for a couple of days. We can manage right. it when it's, it's gone three, four, five, seven right. days. Yeah. You're right. It's challenging. It's a burnout. It's pa it's so challenging we have for everybody. prisons for right? this last shelter. <coughs> Excuse um, me. It was run by the health department. Our social worker was there. Uh, fire department personnel are there. Right. Police yeah. are there. And then also MRC. MRC, yep. They were there. MRC uh, is the uh, reserve nurses. It's the uh, medical reserve medical corps. reserve corps. Oh, so we medical actually reserve. access them. I think this based out of Bridgewater, but we can access extra nurses that may come down. But when you get a widespread storm like a hurricane, I mean these nor'easters, we know the coastal towns that are going to get impacted. We can usually get pretty good resources. But thinking big picture, everybody's going to need them then. So that's even right. more important for right. local volunteers to help okay. out, mm -hmm. to you know, to volunteer. Mm -hmm. Find out what our program is about. Absolutely. Get Corey to make sure right. that you know. Hey, right. if we have a big storm or a big event, it could be anything, that they're prepared and they're signed up to help. And uh, you know, that's that's our biggest challenge I see right. for a larger event. Because well, so well, let's, let's <coughs> hold, hold right there. How do people? How do people volunteer? What do they call? What do they do? Who, and they, and you've got a Corey. Yep. So that's another step for you. So we have a shelter team led by the health department. Mm -hmm. uh, Jennifer Keith. They can go to the health department to see Jennifer Keith. They can go to the SANS website. Mm -hmm. SANS is a big, um, you know, situate alliance for natural mm -hmm. disasters. They can help out um, and get Corey through them. Okay. So between SANS and the health department, they can also go to fire and police. We'll, we'll guide them in the right area, yep. right place to go. Yep. But um, the mm -hmm. more, the more mm -hmm. we may never need them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right, right. We do have a long-term event. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that everybody does a little bit so we mm -hmm. don't get burnt out. But uh, we were lucky this time. We were fortunate. We did have some people utilize the shelter. We had 15 people in the shelter mm -hmm. um, that we had. Unfortunately, the, the, the power outages were not as significant. At that one time, so 600 people yeah. out, nationally good, did a great job because by, I think by about two in the morning, everybody had the power back, back on. on. Yeah. yeah, so they worked hard. DPW worked hard. We also had the National Guard trucks down here that we requested the day before mm -hmm. as part of our planning, uh, anticipating with the large high tide getting flooding. And I think in terms of maybe the <coughs> seniors who had taken advantage of the shelter, and, and most of them, if not all of them, did it pre the worst of the storm. Right. But um, it was because they were fearful of a power outage yep. and did sort of heed our recommendation that they evacuate their home earlier than in the, you know, in the midst of the storm. Right. We do ask everybody, that, especially the seniors that need assistance, We'll use the senior vans or fire police, whoever, right. um, going to pick them up. We asked people right. to sign up the night before the storm. Mm -hmm. In the morning, we had a little bit of time before the high tide right. Right. that they could uh, mm -hmm. sign up the night before so we could schedule. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be going from Minot to Hummer Rock, back to Sand Hills to Minot. So we mm -hmm. want to make sure we can pick up. Listen, we're going to pick up everybody mm -hmm. in Minot at 930 and yep. Sand Hills at 10 o'clock yep. to try to do sort of a bus route. Uh, so early notification is key. For us to be successful at that, because things came in fast. About 11 o'clock, yeah, it was a white out. We had a white out. White out, flooding came in really yep. fast. Yep. So, so we actually still did about 40 evacuations. 40 people evacuated that uh, didn't expect it to be as bad as mm -hmm. it was forecast, and mm -hmm. um, especially the flooding. Mm -hmm. And some people had damage. So a lot of people mm -hmm. did leave. The hotels up in Rockland area, in the Situate area. Sure. Um, were full it was mostly situated people so a lot of people i think it, it was an historic high tide historic high tide we've never gone higher than that no no it did actually get a little higher than 78. we didn't get yeah. the damage of 78 because 78 was a two-day storm right had this been mm -hmm. more of a northeast uh, direction than more north and it was a, a multiple tide um yeah storm duration we still be working on this yeah so that's how impactful I mean, that, that would have been and, th and think about it. that's how high that tide was right. everybody thinks back to the 78 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This beat it. Yeah. Last week. There was, you know, some places along the seawalls where the new seawalls were did very well. Oh. Obviously, oh. some of the old seawalls in, in like 10th Ave, for example, up in that area, the new seawalls um, reduced 
the flooding oh. significantly. Oh, so it did its job. So uh, the areas that weren't and the breach yeah. we had down yeah. by um, the Oceanside B and B exacerbated yeah. the flooding in that area. But they since fixed it, temporary fix. Okay. But we're working on trying to get those areas. Um, what was the difference between that seawall and the ones that that were successful in keeping? So up? the ones that were successful are new, stronger, bigger, and they're two feet higher. So the older one so was helps. less problem. So <laughs> now we actually had an area about 12 feet wide and down to a three foot breach. Three foot breach. Mm -hmm. So you got about a five foot okay. difference in that area. Okay. And it's, you know, um, so we have more work That's to do. To know. The governor came down. Mm -hmm. yeah. We did show him the actual area that breached. Those walls are yep. aging. Yep. We still need more help. The DPW is doing a great job and the town engineers and Nancy Durfee to try to get additional funding. Mm -hmm. um, we have a Corps of Engineers project, hopefully from Rebecca Road all the way up to Two Oceanside Drive that mm -hmm. there's still it's still in the works to get that seawall replaced mm -hmm. and we're trying to fill that gap in well we've had three breaches mm -hmm. in that sand hill sections mm -hmm. in the last since mm -hmm. 2010 mm -hmm. it's the last seven years okay. december 26 so that's an area that i'm concerned with mm -hmm. um for obvious reasons and we'll work with dpw mm -hmm. postal management uh the town and also uh, hopefully the uh, state will get more involved mm -hmm. through jim cantwell and the governor mm -hmm. to um you know, keep the funding coming and, and, and right. get these walls where we need to be. Right. So if we get all these walls done, right. it's going to reduce It'll significantly the, the flooding, at least short term. That's that expensive be. proposition. It's between five and eight thousand dollars a linear foot, so right. it is an expensive propagation. But you know, right. you think of what you're saving right. long term in damage um, to these floods, because mm -hmm. flooding probably does more damage than anything else, unless you get like a Cat Three hurricane with the wind damage. Um, but for us, flooding is, is, mm -hmm. is our most challenge, challenging aspect of the storm. We certainly weren't alone. Now I know there were many no. evacuations. Are some people, do you know, still <coughs> maybe not back in their home because of the damage? Um, I believe there was only area. one family. We did put out uh, on, our, um, on our email last week just being prepared mm -hmm. for the next weekend because we had a big freeze coming yes. in after right. the storm. Mm -hmm. right. And then uh, we had some wind coming in last weekend. We also added that it was, was the Stan's website. If somebody was still displaced, Mm -hmm. due to damage to the okay. home, contact SANS, mm -hmm. and they can coordinate mm -hmm. uh, getting them a place to stay, whether it's a hotel, um, shelter, or volunteers to hold them. So SANS is vital, especially it's, following the storm, to make sure yeah. people get what they need for resources. We are so lucky to have that community-based organization. It, they yeah. are fabulous. You're and right experienced at this point. They have experience. Been doing this for a long so time. that's the number one uh, mm -hmm. contact after the storm. Mm -hmm. Even during the storm, after the storm, is, is SANS. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's mm -hmm. sanshelp.org. Sanshelp.org. And, so, and if yeah. need be, you can go yeah, to the Yeah, and we'll post center. that as well. Yeah, yeah great. So, um, great. so yeah, so SANS is critical. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, I think uh, we're trying to do an assessment of the damage because mm -hmm. this may be a claimed storm as far as right. FEMA. Mm -hmm. Okay. So FEMA has asked us to have all our, all our mm -hmm. estimates in mm -hmm. by the 24th, by next week. So Tuesday. I need everything mm -hmm. by Tuesday, and I have to give it to uh, FEMA by Thursday. Mm -hmm. so, so you are the homeowner. Well, basically, for the town, for all our departments, seawalls, um, debris Roads. management costs, okay. all that other stuff, it'll come through us. Okay. We're also <laughs> asking the um, if anybody has significant damage that was not covered by insurance mm -hmm. to let us know, because FEMA may be able to help. Mm -hmm. okay. So That's if anybody had wow. damage to the foundations, you know, insure, right. if they have insurance, sure. FEMA won't pay. Mm -hmm. But they may pay the deductible, or they may pay to assist you, whether it's low interest mm -hmm. loans mm -hmm. um, for uh, damage from the storm. Also commercial properties, Front Street yes. had a foot and a half of water there. Yeah, I know. CVS was closed down for a week. They were, yeah. the, right. they were the most impacted. Right. So we're looking, reaching out to the Chamber of Commerce, any businesses yeah. that had mm -hmm. damage. A, how much did you have for damage? How much did your insurance co not cover? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, let us know. We may be able to get some assistance mm -hmm. for them as well. Well, that'd be great. Awesome. Yes. Well, that'd not to great. shift gears away from that, but you know, we are a vulnerable community in geographical location, so it is all about preparedness. Correct. So what are the programs, particular programs that we have in place now through you, primarily, but all together, for assisting seniors or the community with preparation? Okay. Information to you. Okay. So the key is us to have the information early mm. and know who we need to help. Um, we have uh, gone to the, um, the open house you had a while back at... at um, the community the center. accessibility awareness right. fair that was right. their first for so. disabled uh, residents. Correct. Right. So we went there and, yeah. and participated in the special needs form that was approved mm -hmm. through, yep. uh, through the town. Uh, is now on the website. So if you go to situatema.gov and you click on emergency preparedness, 
you mm -hmm. can click on the link for the special needs form. Anybody, whether mm -hmm. it's a senior or somebody has a challenge in your mm -hmm. home that we should know about, mm -hmm. this is not only good for storms, but also if we get a call mm -hmm. to your home for medical aid, mm -hmm. yeah, sure. say it's an autistic child mm -hmm. that we know right. that, listen, we have a, an extra challenge here that we have to mm -hmm. be prepared for, have extra mm -hmm. patience with, mm -hmm. maybe bring an extra resource in to help. Yes. So um, yeah. having that information is key. It's, it's, it's in the special needs form, you just click on that, that link, mm -hmm. and it's about a two-page form, you fill all the information out, if there's mm -hmm. any, any problems with that, fill out at the best of your capability, and mm -hmm. we'll um, reach out to you to the senior yeah. center. And it submits to you, or submits to? It submits to Linda, to the senior, to the senior center. center, and also fire and police. So okay. we'll have in our, in so our, both. In our computers, mm -hmm. we Good. go out to a medical leave, and we'll have this information mm -hmm. ahead of time. Listen, we have a challenge here. Yeah. But during the storms, um, if somebody has a challenge during the storm, we ask them, try to call us a day ahead of time. Some people call for extra oxygen. Mm -hmm. yep. we, we order extra oxygen prior to a big storm. So we have it, there's a small bottle. So if wow. somebody runs out of power or needs extra oxygen, this is a three or four or five mm -hmm. day event, we can provide that um, to our seniors. But they just have to let us know they may need it. And those who are evacuating or mm -hmm. want to be evacuated, mm -hmm. that's the key to get us the word early. So mm -hmm. we can actually coordinate the morning or prior to the storm getting those people to a shelter, to a hotel, whatever they need. So something on the happen. website is actually referencing that I yes. am evacuating? Yeah, so we did this prior storm, we had a red banner mm -hmm. uh, right on the main page mm -hmm. of the uh, town website. Yep. Everything you needed to know about the storm, the storm preparedness, cold weather yep. um, preparedness was on that banner. So you can just click on the mm -hmm. top of the main webpage, where do I go? Click right on that, all your mm -hmm. information is right there. Mm -hmm. Um, and that'll lead you to the emergency preparedness site, mm -hmm. which you can get the special needs form. Also, another another um, link we have now that you can file online is I've evacuated. Mm -hmm. So those, especially along the coastline, we ask them to evacuate early, but also let us know they've evacuated. Okay. So if we get, say we had a house fire. Mm -hmm. Sure. And we have four houses downwind that may catch fire. Mm -hmm. We know, listen, these three homes have been Are evacuated. Evacuated. Right. evacuated. Also, we get a lot of calls people that the relatives and friends mm -hmm. can you check on my mom can you check on this person listen mm -hmm. we know your mom went to a hotel at two o'clock and this is where she's staying mm -hmm. so we ask them to identify where they're going mm -hmm. mostly not that we need to know mm -hmm. where they're going we just know they need to be evacuated mm -hmm. but actually um, for relatives and friends that may call yeah. for well-being check yeah so now, now I'm I'm maybe I'll point here but the senior son, you guys are making phone calls the day before to double check on people. We have a, a people, list right? that You've we call and some, make right? that number of phone calls right. prior to a storm we know about right. um, in advance. So we took the day before, in this case, mm -hmm. to make those calls and to make recommendations, A, depending on their location, to evacuate. Do they have family or friends, someplace that they could go early? Yep. If not, to be sure they either are prepared to stay at home right. and have what they need, um, and as well, if they think they may need transportation to either get that information to the fire department early, as the chief said, or to make sure they have the number, which I believe we did have for this storm, which was at the emergency operations center and was being received you know, that morning, if they hadn't decided prior to that that they wanted transportation Yeah, and all of a sudden they the changed shelter. their mind. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's sure. late in the game, it's worse than they thought. So we have the website, but also the 781-545-8749 uh, is a, it's an emergency management number that we have, mm -hmm. that we actually have right in the emergency operations center that day. Mm -hmm. So somebody, it's not a 911 call, if you, if no. you have an emergency, you call 911. If it's not emergency information, mm -hmm. is the shelter open, mm -hmm. where is the shelter, how can I get a ride, 8749 is the number you want to call. We have that um, staffed all day during the storm in the emergency operations center. So the website. Um, the senior center, fire police, there's plenty of access for information. But go to the website, and if you can't access the website, yeah. that's where the senior center may come in. You have yes. laptops, computers there yes. that you can guide some people and to. And we can at know least guide or give them information that they're not getting anywhere else because they just don't have access. Correct. And our list needs to be updated constantly. Things change. Sure, so absolutely. if anybody wants to be on that list to receive Call. those phone calls, even because we may have information knowing there was going to be a shelter, that they wouldn't have had yet. Yep. So it was important to be able to tell them that prior. Um, let them think about it. Some thought, no, we'll be fine. Others, as you said, they did think they'd be fine. And I'm not sure of those who said yeah. they'd be fine over, you know, in certain more vulnerable locations. Did they end up leaving? I, I am not sure. Yeah, like I said, we had 40 evacuations, and obviously most of them in our flood zones. We couldn't get there without the 
The police have two vehicles, high water vehicles, but also the National Guard. And we had them all going at once for a few you hours. Did. So uh, to the point where we couldn't even get our fire apparatus down there. So we were actually putting fire hoses and, and hydrant bags in the back of these vehicles to try to run off hydrant pressure. If we had to fight a fire, we'd have to be in ice rescue suits down there along the water, because if you get one house fire down there, you're going to have five. So that's one of the reasons a couple of years ago we turned the power off preemptively because we knew right. it was extreme right. cold, yeah. which would be sticking, the ice would be sticking to the, uh, the lines and power outages and creating a more of an um, electrical hazard. So we didn't do it this time. We did mm -hmm. some things with National Grid, never saw us to improve getting some of those shutoffs off the main roads along the ocean, put them on the side roads. So we felt a little more comfortable mm -hmm. this storm not shutting mm -hmm. the power off. Mm -hmm. We did shut the power off to one area by 3rd Avenue Ocean Cycle, we had one mm -hmm. house, their electrical panel was underwater. So that affected about 12, um, probably 12 to 14 homes, but mm -hmm. they were turned on, I think, by about 7 or 8 o'clock that night. So, but that's the stuff that happens. Um, but getting out of your homes and evacuating, mm -hmm. nobody's going to get hurt. You're not going right. to stop when the storm breaks. You prepare, you prepare your home the best you can, and if you leave just during the storm, you go back, you're not going to change anything. So. You know, the people that don't evacuate put themselves, their family, their pets, as well as the first responders in, in, in peril. So, 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 Chief, I know you probably touched on this at the beginning, but so you know a storm's coming, and you're going to set up a meeting to do a preparedness 48 hours in advance. Right. I've heard you've mentioned National Guard, National Grid, SANS, like, is everybody sitting around a table? Doing this, or yes. like who's in who's in that meeting when you're when you're preparing and you know something's coming on mm -hmm. 72 hours down the, down the pipe. So we first meet with our town departments. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, Linda's there, the senior center. We have uh, fire, police, mm -hmm. DPW, mm -hmm. all our shelter personnel, um, the building inspectors. Because the building inspectors, a lot of times, they'll have deputized inspectors. So right after the storm's done, they go out and assess, especially the coastal homes to see if um, they're safe, safe to go back and safe right. to go back into. So okay. we meet initially with our core people in uh, within the town departments, okay. and we're in contact with MEMA to let them know the resources we may need. We ordered two um, high water vehicles and an extra uh, trailer of um, cots yeah, bets, for the right, shelter. Yeah. So we had them brought in prior to so the storm. So you could put that, you could sort of put that order in in advance. Some things we've learned, because at one, t one storm we got them basically during the storm, after the storm, and we said, we need them prior to the storm, yeah. it does us no good. So mm -hmm. they've heard that loud and clear, and they've done a great job changing that um, format. So we did get the two vehicles uh, prior to the storm. They were here at 6 in the morning, and we had the, um, the trailer here um, mm -hmm. prior to the storm. So we had extra cots if, if there was a large power outage. Right. We had 200 people there. We want to make sure we can provide cots mm -hmm. and it's, it's make it as comfortable as we can uh, for those. So in the preparation, we all meet. So the coordination, we go through MEMA to get the extra cots, to get the, uh, the National Guard vehicles. So MEMA we're in constant contact with, uh, as well as we have our primary contacts with National Grid, mm -hmm. Eversource, and Columbia Gas. Okay. So they send a liaison down. So they'll have up on the screen in our emergency our operations center these are the properties that we know are out. That's great. And so we can look right at the board and ask questions. And listen, if we have a high priority, this we have a real hazard here, potential fire, we need to get this property secured, as, as this, this hazard, as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. They will prioritize that and call their main room and say, listen, the fire department needs somebody down there now. So reroute vehicles mm -hmm. um, if you have a life safety issue. So um, Everything's flowing through the office at Fire and Safety? Everything flows through the emergency operations center, correct. So okay. we'll always have, uh, there'll be somebody, a lot of times I'm out in different places, my deputy chief will be there, he's running the emergency operations center mm -hmm. yeah. uh, during the day coordinating mm -hmm. what we need. I'm the emergency management director, he's also the assistant emergency management director, so mm -hmm. able to make decisions mm -hmm. uh, there if I'm out on the road. But mm -hmm. um, you know, we coordinate well with the police, DPW and fire are the key players, but the support personnel mm -hmm from the seniors to the uh, from Linda to the shelter team. Mm -hmm. We check in the shelter right. team, yeah, make yeah, sure yeah. they're all set. We ask them to have 12, uh, 12 hour shifts is what MEMA recommends, um, especially at the shelter where that could right. be a long duration okay. event. Oh. So we opened our uh, EOC that morning at 7 a.m. and we closed down in the afternoon uh, the following okay. day at 2 p.m. Okay. The shelter was about 24 hours, maybe 27 yep. hours. Yep, exactly, about the same. So There um, were some overnight. 
at the shelter. Yeah, they were. I mean, this past storm was a was a quick one. You know, it hit at nine in the morning and it was done by nine at night or yeah. eight, eight at night. That's the positive. Yeah, the other ones can go double that. Yeah, we know we, um, that storm brought equal flooding height to the no-name storm in many areas. Uh, down in Hummer Rock, someone who's down there, that, that they haven't seen that since 91. Right. That height of, uh, right. Water, especially on Southern Hummer Rock. The Central Lab, we know that gets hit hard yes. on the northern part of Hummer Rock, but some of the parts of Southern Hummer Rock, it came in from the river. The flooding, so it came in from the backside. <laughs> okay. Just like Lighthouse Point, the water came in from the harbor before it came over the wall. So they had about three feet of water down there. You must have seen the picture. So when this water comes in, it comes in fast. So that's the thing. We ask people to listen. We ask everybody, move out by 10 a.m. Because mm -hmm. shortly after 11 o'clock, it came in, came in fast. And you're right, um, we are fortunate that we had one tide. It was more of a north yeah. wind than a northeast wind. And, um, you know, had this had more time to build up, those 10 to 12 foot waves would have been 15 to 20. Yeah. So take that same height and make it 15 to 20 foot waves. Mm -hmm. It's a bad scene. Hey, you, you, uh, everybody in the world is watching Situate these days <laughs> on these things. We are, we're sort of... Um, it's getting, trans, you know, this is getting transmitted internationally sometimes. You know, we usually see that, because I live right behind the bed and breakfast, and a lot of them stay there, and my wife says, here they come. Uh, <laughs> here comes the media. The media's right coming the, in. So they come the in. and the satellite they, bands. Yeah, uh -huh. They're out there for a couple of days beforehand, mm -hmm. a couple of days after, and, yep. and they're all in town. And, um, and you know, and, and, it, and it's good coverage, but it's, um, you know, that's mm -hmm. situated is now sort of the, um, almost the ground zero for Norris. Yeah. 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 So the infrastructure we have to build up is, um, is critical to improve, keep improving the seawalls, and then what's beyond seawalls, there's a lot of discussion on, and what works and what doesn't, mm -hmm. but we know, at least short term, mm -hmm. seawalls are the best solution for us to, uh, to keep mm -hmm. our properties and mm -hmm. our infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, safe from mm -hmm. flooding. So, so Chief, before we let you go, what, what didn't work, or what, what didn't work on this past storm, or what can we, you know, what, what are the things that, that, on? that were flagged for you to say, mm, we need to get better at this? So the, the number one thing is evacuations. We really try to preach the evacuations, whether it's um, be a host of the coast. Somebody around here, you, you know, you have friends yes. along the coastline, mm -hmm. you go to the places during the summer to go to the beaches, mm -hmm. their cookouts, bring them back to your home. Invite them in for a night to get out of the way of the storm. Mm -hmm. We've listed all the hotels. Mm -hmm. um, we did that on our, our information dissemination during the storm, prior mm -hmm. to the storm, and also on the websites. Uh, the the Inner Citroën Harbor has a great rate for people that during storms. So a lot of people heeded that warning, mm -hmm. but we still had 40 evacuations that put them as well as our uh, mm -hmm. personnel in peril. So we have to get... And when you say evacuations, these weren't people who preemptively evacuated. These are people who called during the storm and said, okay, now I, bet, I better go. Right. These are emergency evacuations. So you see in every hurricane, and you see every, I've never seen this bad before, and people that get caught, people that get killed, people that get hurt, if you just leave mm -hmm. the hazard zone mm -hmm. for the storm, maybe it's eight hours, maybe it's two days, right. and no matter what, you prepare your home the best you can, you're not going to stop Mother Nature. So whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Hopefully you go back and there's no damage. Right. And you know you leave your water trickling if it's cold, you right. cold and hot water, or you can shut your water off or prior to the storm. But you're not going to change what she's going to bring. And that's the one thing we have to continue to march on is to get people to understand this is a real challenge for them. It's a hazard for their family, their pets themselves, and the first responders. So that's the first thing I would say. We've got to continue that march. Right. I mean, it, it does put the first responders at risk. Yeah, we I mean, they're, they're trudging through to try to, through the storm to get the people who need help, right. and it's difficult to do that. It's done so well getting the information out to people if they do have access to that information, whether it's, yeah. you know, So uh, we actually urge people to sign up for mm -hmm. um, Code Red. If you haven't done that, you can do that through the town web page. Awesome. Big code right, right in the middle. That's a reverse 911 system that the sheriff's department puts out. We put our message out to that mm -hmm. as a as a, as a alert. warning, as a warning you know, for anything. It could be anything from a, a tornado to a storm coming mm -hmm. up. Uh, but also we have emails. Sign up for the email, mm -hmm. the town emails. Um, we have Twitter, Facebook. Mm -hmm. All this information is set out. We usually mm -hmm. try to set out at least one or two bulletins a day. What we expect as we get more information in. Um, and, you know, being living down by the water, I get a, a pretty good sense over the years mm -hmm. of what we're going to get. So I also um, talk with David Ball. I mm -hmm. talk with meteorologists, try to get as much information to make it as accurate as we can. Um, 
Mm -hmm. And I think so far it's been pretty so close, you know, great. with all the resources we have to identify what Better. situation's going to get. Better. So Better. really to heed those mm -hmm. warnings mm -hmm. that, you know, um, Mother Nature is, yeah. is going to bring what it's going to bring. And if you get out of harm's way, nobody gets hurt and killed. Everything can be rebuilt, but you can't replace a life. Right. Anything else right. while we have the opportunity that you might want to mention as a reminder maybe for those needing to call 911 or any other sort of fire safety programs that... Um, well, you hit it on earlier a little bit about the, uh, the Senior Safe Program. Uh, we have the SAFE program for children, which was initiated uh, back in 1995, April 95, when we had the three children perish on a fire on Hadley Road. Mm -hmm. That There was talk about it, but that fire triggered the SAFE program for children. <coughs> Excuse me. At that time, we were averaging about 23 children a year dying in fires. Oh. Now we're down to less than two, and that program is statewide, mm -hmm. and it's done great programs. We go in from kindergarten to third grade, uh, teach the stop, drop, and roll, Teach, you know, let the kids know that we're not, you know, we come in with these, um, mm -hmm. the, all the gear on that don't right. be afraid. Cause right. A lot of times children hide in a fire and that's how uh, hey, right. they, they perish. Strangers, so, strangers coming in with right. them. Yeah. So now we have a senior safe program. Mm -hmm. so now the seniors are the most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. They're the most vulnerable for a fire or getting hurt or killed in mm -hmm. a fire. So, and the number one reason is lack of smoke detectors and carbon dioxide detectors. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of our role, the new rule is now, um, any detectors that are over 10 years old have to be replaced. Yep. And now they come with 10-year batteries. Yep. So mm -hmm. going forward, you want to change the batteries every mm -hmm. spring and fall. So we want to make sure that people take them out. Mm -hmm. You know, these are going to be sealed batteries. Yep. So uh, for mm -hmm. any false alarms, don't take them out and just leave it there. I'll put it up later. You never do. Right. Never do. <laughs> so, but you were uh, lucky enough. You had some uh, grant money. So we had grant money. We actually just yesterday got a notification from the state. We got additional, you know, this year's grant money came through oh, for the SAFE okay. program and the Senior SAFE program. So okay. any seniors out there that want okay. an assessment done of their mm -hmm. home for fire mm -hmm. protection, uh, carbon dioxide, smoke protectors, we work with the Red Cross and the state mm -hmm. to try to make sure that... Call the uh, fire department? Call senior center. Call the fire department right. or the senior center. We'll get right it here. both in a list. Elena mm -hmm. Chevry is, runs our SAFE program, does a great job. She coordinates this with the seniors. It, the last also, two winters we have I know. visited, you know, I eight to say, 12 households. Usually February uh, is about the time that I mentally note that you guys are out there doing that and checking yeah. on people and yeah. making, making a change if you can. Right. So at any time during the year, if you say, you know what, <laughs> we have to, we have to, um, I have to get my smoke detectors checked. Call us, we'll make it happen. You know, um, if it's not February, we do more early in the year. But anytime, we want to make sure everybody's safe. If you're selling a home, it doesn't count. You know, you have to pay for that yourself if you're selling a home. But if it's somebody that's living there mm -hmm. and they're a senior, yeah. we'll make sure we come out and, um, and give them the assistance they need. You know, the only other thing, we so we talked about Code Red, mm -hmm. the uh, special needs form online, mm -hmm. the eye mm -hmm. of evacuating, yes. and then, um, you know, also, if we don't open up a shelter, we may use warming centers. We had real cold mm -hmm. days. Sometimes somebody's heat may fail or not be, be warm enough. So the senior center mm -hmm. and the library are our two warming okay. shelters. Okay. We'll have that out in that information by mm -hmm. email, Twitter, Facebook. Um, so to sign up for those, yep. those ways to get information from the town is, is really important. You know, you can always call us too. Yep. You can always call us and let us know, listen, call the senior center, call the fire, call the police. Yep. Is Even without a power center? outage, some people's heat was just not yeah. ad not adequate, yeah. and we have good heat at the senior center. Yeah. If we have power, yep. library has uh, will. Yeah, the library is working on getting a generator, yeah. so yeah. it's a beautiful facility. It's yeah. perfect for that. Yeah. So we'll work with the library to try to make that a future warming center. We do it now, yeah. but if power's out, right. we want to make sure, and that's a lot of people will stay at home, yeah. but during the day they have to go someplace to a get warm, right. maybe get 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 fed, and then also right. um, primarily have a place to. Uh, Get information. Yeah. Get some people yeah. may work from home at the library or something like Absolutely. that too. We were fortunate in for Hummer Rock, there's a yeah. few things we've done to improve down there. Um, we actually have a MOU with the Fourth Cliff Recreation mm -hmm. Base mm -hmm. through the Air Force now. We had two personnel staged up there, uh, paramedic, two firefighters okay. born the paramedic that mm -hmm. um, if there was because they were isolated when that water came yeah. through, they were isolated for there was about three feet of sand and debris with, with water coming from on top of that during the storm. That if anybody had a fire up there, we could at least try to keep that fire small, keep it contained. But also, if they needed medical attention, mm -hmm. we did have one call up there, um, oh. an EMS call. So okay. that's something new we've done to improve the okay. response to Hummer Rock. Okay. We also work with a private shelter down there. It's called the Boathouse. It used to be the Positively 10 Marshfield Ave mm -hmm. that a gentleman there has donated 
his space mm -hmm. for a temporary shelter oh, for Humber. Nice. So we all know we don't want to go far during the storm, yeah. especially in Humberaka situate. Sure. So to have that mm -hmm. ability, we thank uh, it's Rich Tornsey down there okay. and Lisa Case that put that together. That, um, and that went well. This, this it did. They okay. they were set up. We brought Good. down about a dozen cots to make sure they had Great. cots down there. Good. The rest of it, they're sort of self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. That um, that was critical to yes. the Humber Rock residents, yes. especially yes. along Central Ave, okay. to have a place to go during the storm and get out mm -hmm. of harm's way. And we've also worked with Eversource to be able to shut mm -hmm. off the power just to North Situate in case you know we have North Situate gets hit the hardest. If one primary goes down, the whole peninsula's out. So now they can isolate that to North Central. If they have to shut the power down, mm -hmm. it's only to those really serious, in, in, you know, the, the top 25% mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. Humber Rock mm -hmm. that are sort of in harm's way. Mm -hmm. The rest of Humber Rock wouldn't have to be mm -hmm. shut down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they can stay in their homes if they needed to. Obviously, they're going to freeze their pipes. So Eversource mm -hmm. worked with us to mm -hmm. put a remote shut off. Mm -hmm. They can shut off from their office if we need to. Wow. So. Now, can I ask one more question? With the new safety complex, do you still provide, is there still a triage opportunity for some people who are in an emergency situation, a health situation themselves? Um, maybe not sure if they need to go to the hospital, <clears throat> maybe in their vehicle. In that new building, we have a triage room. It's right off the okay. main foyer in the front okay. of the building. So if somebody has to, uh, off the street. wanted to get evaluated, mm -hmm. they're not sure if they go to the hospital, their primary doctor, um, stay home or whatever it is, and, mm. and we anticipate this to increase in the future with paramedicine because they say right now about 40% of people that go to the hospital down the road will not be allowed to go to the hospital. Right. Insurance will not cover it. Right. So we're actually, uh, we have a, uh, a triage unit there, mm -hmm. so somebody can come in there. We have everything in that room mm -hmm. that it's like a doctor's office mm -hmm. that you'd have in the ambulance, mm -hmm. you know, so we can put you on an EKG, mm -hmm. we test your lungs, your blood pressure, and do an evaluation say, you know what, we can treat you on scene send you home, go to your primary, go to a health stop, right. or go to South Shore Hospital. Right. And if they need to go to the hospital, right out the other door, down right. the hallway is the ambulance. Okay. So it's, uh, mm -hmm. we're working on now, part of the, uh, this new building is taking some pressure off our station one down at First Parish Road. Okay. So now we're working to relocate um, some administrative offices that we had before okay. into a triage room okay. and, a, uh, and a training room. And now the captains will finally have their own office. Prior, prior to this, we had four captains and one deputy yeah. in a small office. It was very, not very constructive, yeah. not very efficient. Oh, so yeah. we Good. sort of spread our resources out mm -hmm. with the new building. But it's giving us space down at the new station. Uh, and also in Humber Rock, we're looking to either do a renovation or perhaps even a replacement of that station down oh, the there. station down there. Um, and including a, um, a triage mm -hmm. room down mm -hmm. there as well. So in the future, That's all of our great. stations will have yeah. triage rooms. Yeah. Anybody can come in there, get medical care. That's great. Uh, we'll have paramedics okay. and EMTs at every station to evaluate and uh, they help you get stabilized and, and yeah. get transportation if you need it. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. so much. I think You're that welcome. was Chief, appreciate, so valuable. Chief, appreciate all the expertise. <laughs> You're welcome. Anytime. Well, that was a lot of information in a short amount of time. I think we can do it to help uh, everybody, but especially our seniors, we'll be happy to do it. Well, if, when, if there's a message you need to get out, you know, come on back. Great. I appreciate it. Any that. questions, certainly call the Senior Center, 781-545-8722. We do have a new phone system, and there is a new greeting there, but um, you have the ability to access any extension and any staff person at that time. So thank you very much for watching. Thanks for coming. Thank, thank you. you, J.D. See you next week.